Hello my darlings and welcome back to my channel and to another video. So of course I'm taking your requests very seriously and you wanted a new shop or drop kind of a video. So in here I'm gonna talk about all the new releases, at least the ones that caught my eye in one way or another and I'm gonna tell you if it's better to shop them or at least get interested or completely drop them. So let's go ahead and jump right in and if you haven't already please subscribe because it's fun in here. So let's start my darlings. The first fragrance I wanna shop or drop is the newest release from Byredo and that is Eyes Closed. And this fragrance is considered to be warm, spicy, cinnamon, um, powdery iris fragrance. And we've got some cinnamon, cardamom, we've got some oris, carrot, ginger, and then we have some earthy tones in the dry down such as patchouli. And I must say, this actually does look interesting. There is a fragrance that was recently released, I'm gonna talk about it in a second, from Theo Cabanel, which seems to be quite similar, but we'll get to that later. Uh, well, now in here you do have to consider the price a little bit, because Byredo is very expensive and there are fragrances on the market that are similar-ish, such as Givenchy uh, Reserve Privé Gentleman that I talked about already many times and that is a gorgeous powdery irisy fragrance and even though it's for men it's absolutely perfect to be worn by anyone and I love it personally. Um, so if you really love a Byredo brand I think it's not gonna be as fleeting and not so long lasting as the others. I think it's actually gonna have more of a decent longevity from what I heard, from what I read, and of course the note structure itself speaks quite a bit for me. Um, so there is a chance that it's gonna be very nice on your skin and quite long lasting. So considering that, if you don't want to go for anything that's similar and you want your Byredo, so yeah, however just get it i'm sure it's gonna be nice because it's interesting but seems wearable at the same time however just bear in mind that there are fragrances that um might perform better and they are cheaper but for me it's like a meh meh you know i'm not sure but i would say okay shop shop but uh, only if you have uh, a lot of money to spend okay if you're on a budget don't don't get interested in that because you can get cheaper things but yeah eyes closed seems interesting and um i don't think it's going to be a bad purchase you know nevertheless all right now we've got uh, two new releases from ariana grande and uh, that is mod blush and mod vanilla uh, they to me look very interesting the bottles um <laughs> Uh, looks a bit like a toy. I don't know guys, tell me what you think, but to me it kind of looks like an adult toy. So Mod Blush is fruity, it has some raspberry and passion fruit and pear. Uh, this actually seems interesting, uh, however um, my only concern is that it's gonna be just like all the other um, how do I call it? Celebrity slash Victoria's Secret fragrances that are first not the most um, interesting and also not the most long lasting. So that really concerns me. If you want your nice, straightforward, fruity, sweet, girly fragrance, then of course, but I don't think it's really worth it. Uh, so with Mod Blush, I would say drop. Sorry, Ariana. And with Mod Vanilla, uh, we've got some plum and praline and orris root and coconut. Uh, this is definitely right up my alley. However, many people do compare it to what she already had released before, which are clouds and even God is a woman. Um, so honestly, I feel like if you do have cloud one or the other, and if you had God is a woman, this would be redundant. So I think it's a drop 
again. Uh, <laughs> sorry guys, but um, you know, you wanted my honest opinion. So there it is. And now also, I don't think I spoke about it before. We had two new or even more uh, new releases from Armani Privé line. And the ones that really caught my eye is magenta tanzanite and then we have indigo tanzanite, if I'm not mistaken. So with magenta tanzanite, uh, this actually I did have in my basket for quite a while uh, because this is something that's definitely interesting for me because, you know, it's that uh, warm, spicy vanillic of a scent. We have some tobacco and tonka and coffee and cinnamon. Uh, and we have some cardamom and ginger at the top. Many people do compare it to... Um, what is the name of that fragrance? Many uh, people compare it to Tobacco Vinny. And many people compare it to Herod. Uh, also um, the Jasmine one from Penhaligans. But I think this would actually be a shop. I'm considering this fragrance myself. So yeah, it's, it's interesting guys. This is very much something that I would purchase myself. So uh, if you have a budget, then I, I would really go for it, uh, especially if you see it on a sale. And then we have Indigo Tanzanite, which is like an amber patchouli fragrance. And this one has some almond and heliotrope and milk. And then you have patchouli and labdanum, so more of those uh, Middle Eastern nose pulling through from the base. And uh, according to Fragrantica, of course, some people compare it to uh, Killian, Gold Knight, and uh, Fahrenheit, and Grand Soir from MFK. So the, the, <laughs> the opinions are very different, okay? Um, and it's really hard to pinpoint how this fragrance would actually smell. I actually did not smell this fragrance because I couldn't find it anywhere near me. They did have magenta tanzanite, but they did not have the indigo for some reason. Um, this, just because it's so supposedly patchouli heavy, I would say for me it would be a drop. But if you are a fan of patchouli, this has a very interesting note structure. So I would get interested uh, in that fragrance if you like patchouli, if you like more Middle Eastern leaning fragrances with some slight milky tones, but uh, it's supposed to be quite earthy so I'm not really sure about how strong that milky almond is there so yeah but in general interesting enough uh, different enough because people compare it to so many things it might pull differently on different people so I would say it is a shop okay it is a shop it's uh, definitely rich enough in terms of the notes that uh, it might be worth the price so both of these are monies I would say it's a shop if you have the budget okay now speaking of that fragrance I uh, was referring to before Theo Cabanel Encore um, and this I already tested. I have a, a deacon of it kindly sent to me from Theo Cabanel team. So it's fresh out the oven and I really fell in love with it, guys. <laughs> um, first of all, it's not too expensive. And second of all, it's really strong. It really did last on me very, very well. Um, to me, I don't really smell that much of a carrot. It's also not that gourmand for me, you know? It's more like a, it's more like a more uplifting version of Cafe Cabanel, just without coffee, okay? But it's still like this warm, spicy vanillic of a scent. If you loved Cafe Cabanel, you will love Encore. Uh, very, very nicely done fragrance. It's not too sweet, for sure not too sweet. So yeah, and this might be actually a better bank for your buck comparing to Byredo. So I would say this one, definite shop, definite shop. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, now, recently there was another whole range of Zara fragrances uh, appearing on their website in collaboration with Jo Malone again. Um, my friend Andy did purchase some already and they do seem interesting enough 
especially for the price to get them. Um, I would say neither shop nor drop because it really depends on what you like. I haven't seen any fragrance in there that is that easy or that straightforward. So thumbs up for that. They're definitely a little bit more unique than your, you know, normal Zara fragrance done by Zara. These are definitely more unique. Are they better than Vibrant Cities, let's say? Probably not. Probably not. I can tell you that straight away. However, just go and see for yourself if you haven't already, if you haven't heard of that release, I'm telling you now. I would say in that scenario, kind of like with Byredo, you do have to, you know, really estimate if it's worth it for you. Neither shop nor drop. I personally would not buy them myself for myself unless you really want a review. So these are my two cents for that. For me, it's a rather a drop. But I know there are many people who might actually like them. And you know, a Zara fragrance will never hurt because it's not too expensive and you get a great perfume behind it, right? So yeah, that, these are my two cents. Um, the next one that I have here is Versace Dylan Purple and I already have um, the decant with me. And guys, um, I... I would say it's a drop, honestly. Um, it's nothing interesting in here. It's supposed to be like a pear fragrance, but guys, it smells so cheap. So, so, so cheap. I'm being completely honest with you here. If you like a pear and you don't want to spend a lot of money, just get yourself Zara Paris or get yourself Ariana uh, God is a Woman. Um, if you want something that has a little bit more longevity and oomph to it, then get yourself uh, Juliet Has a Gun, gorgeous pear fragrance. This one smells flipping cheap, flipping cheap. And no, no, this is a drop. This is a drop. Next. I have Narciso Eau de Parfum Cristal and this is supposed to be what? Is this supposed to replace my white cube? I don't think so. I mean, this is a good fragrance. It is nice. It is like a powdery white floral, slightly woody. It's surely sweeter than the white cube. It's sh surely way more floral than the white cube because to me the white cube smells like wool like fresh wool and some woods to it amazing just amazing this mm, a little bit soapy as well um i mean Narciso makes nice fragrances in general um but would i really want it in my collection probably not if you want something very ethereal and just very feminine and great for every day, then okay, shop. Uh, but other than that, I would drop it. I would just drop it because I don't feel like it's a long lasting fragrance. You know, I wore it on my hands a couple of times and it was very like easy to wash off, if you know what I mean. Mm, no, um, it's not bad. It's not bad, but I would still drop it. I would truly still drop it. Next, we have brought Prada Paradox. And this I have tested thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. And I must say that um, if you want something slightly more long lasting, then I would go for Armani my way. Uh, if you want something super polarizing, but within the same realm, then go for the OG Lanta D from Givenchy, the original of course if you like a nice floral pulp very nice and sweet like this sweet bubblegummy kind of white floral then this will be perfect for you i would say that this is a shop because it's a gorgeous scent it really is very pretty however still there are better uh, ones that are already out like our money my way uh, which is interesting because it has that nice bergamot through and through. Or Lontody, you guys know. It's a powerhouse. So, yeah, it's 
honestly very very these fragrances are very difficult to judge you know because i know that many people might love them but are they truly worth them are, are they truly worth the money i'm not too sure however i must say the fragrance works beautifully i get around five to six hours from it so i would say okay shop shop we've had so many like this one on the market already at least 10 at least 10 so there's nothing new about it but it's still nice so if you don't have any other like it then shop but if you already have l'entity uh, my way uh, libre eau de toilette and all that jazz then then drop it because you're gonna be just bored with it basically so these are my two cents on Prada paradox okay but by the way guys I'm very sorry if you hear weird noises that's the dishwasher and I can do nothing to stop it at the moment because it's almost done but I want to record ASAP so I had to sit okay uh, of course we've got libre le parfum and uh, this one is definitely the furthest one from all the other uh, libre fragrances uh, this one i would say is the most vanilla one it also has added honey to it and i i love it i love it i really do like it it's definitely the most subdued in terms of the lavender so if you were a little bit annoyed with that lavender in the original and the intense then this one will be the best for you it's also the warmest um, also the sweetest actually and it has some spiciness to it which i personally adore so uh, i would say um if you really like the dna then absolutely shop however don't shop just yet i would wait for a little bit at least two months and just wait for those prices to drop a little bit because now that it's still quite new it's still not worth getting it wait two months more when the christmas period goes away and then shop but in general great fragrance i like it i like it more than than intense which i never purchased and i think i also like it more than the original so yeah le parfum libre shop next fragrance we have is from memo and this is called kotor and honestly guys surely a fragrance that i would pay attention to because it is a tonka amber wood nutty vanillic caramel honey fragrance so yeah like just from the note structure i would say shop but wait there are also notes that supposedly clash with what we have um, in that base of the fragrance because there's rhubarb there is thyme there's saffron so you know it might be a little bit weird in the very beginning uh, also many people compare it to grand soir and also many people compare it to herod so which one is it right um, i think this is a very beautiful sweet ambery based fragrance uh, with gorgeous note structure and still very unique for that amber vanilla so if you love your ambers then just shop away shop it shop it shop it however if you are not too familiar with ambers and how they can go because you know ambers can go very masculine also ambers combined with uh, herbs and spices at the top can go very polarizing and not many people can handle them so i would say shop but try it first this is not an easy blind buy even though the nose might tell you otherwise because you see that tonka you see that amber wood and you see that vanilla caramel and you instantly want it but there are other things in that fragrance that might go differently on each person so just test it on your skin because you know amber and caramel with rhubarb and thyme again guys try it first i cannot tell you shop or drop because this can again go different on each and every single skin so for me i would say i would shop it yes uh, but you better test it on your skin not an easy blind buy 
And last but not least, we've got good fortune from Victor and Rolf. I'm not sure if I talked about it last time I did shop or draw, but now I have tested it a couple of times and now I have even more to say. So first of all, it's long lasting. Second of all, I do like how it smells. And third of all, it slightly reminds me of Alien in the best way possible. However, there are a couple of notes in there that I know on some people might be very polarizing. On me, I really didn't smell it that much, but then my friend tested it uh, when she was at my house and she absolutely despised it, even though she likes Alien and stuff like that. So again, I wouldn't say it's the easiest blind buy. Um, to me, it does have enough of an Alien uh, that I like it. You know, it has so much resemblance for me in terms of that indolic jasmine that I really like it. Would I shop it though? It's not actually that expensive. Uh, as I browse online, I feel like it's still less expensive than Flower Bomb, which is like, I don't know, 15 years old by the time I'm recording this. Maybe even more, very old one. So I feel like the closer it gets to the dry down, the easier and more like Alien it is. However, those first two notes that they to me, literally, they put it there to make the fragrance interesting. Less mainstream, yes, but still, I think it was a very premeditated move to just make something like, wow, that's so different. Is it though? Is it? I don't know. Uh, we've got fennel and gentiana, which smell weird on some people guys they really do smell weird on some people um very herbal almost like bitter yeah so i'm not sure it doesn't pull badly on me but i know it might be very different experience for you so again another fragrance that you should definitely try before you blind buy or do some other crazy thing um, again, the dry down, very easy, very nice of a scent, the alienic, um, typical jasmine and vanilla, which I love, but the first hour or two might be weird on you. So be wary of that, but I would say still a shop actually. <laughs> I think I changed my mind since last time. I think last time I only tested it once or twice in the shops and now I had those um, testers with me um, when I was, you know, just living my life. And I would say I, I actually liked it. So to me, it's a shop. Yeah. And that is it, my darlings, with our shop or drop. I hope you liked it and I will probably do another one in the next three months because I think we had like a two or three month break uh, between the last shop or drop and this one. And I think uh, every month it would be not enough new fragrances. I mean, there would be, but I don't think you would be so excited to see such video. So I would do shop or drop every two or three months. So I think I'm gonna see you in February or March with another shop or drop. So that is it for today. If there is something that you really, really urgently want me to you know, share my thoughts on, then let me know in the comments. I love you and see you in my next one. Bye.